Since 2011, the North Central Catchment Management Authority has been working to deliver a project aimed at the protection and enhancement of threatened grassy woodlands in our region. The project was jointly funded by the Commonwealth Government's Caring for Our Country initiative and the Victorian Government's Natural Resources Investment Program. The North Central CMA has worked with landholders, land care groups and the local Indigenous community to raise awareness, share knowledge and build partnerships. It provides some insight and understanding about the rich Indigenous culture within our region and the groups and individuals that work endlessly to capture and share that knowledge. My name is Rick Kerr and I am a direct descendant of the first peoples of this land we stand on here today. I welcome you here to country where our culture is strong and still thriving. Waterways have nurtured and provided for our people for many thousands of years and countless generations. We'll go down about 200 metres and there's like a little weir. Um, but I'll, I'll point out to you, because like some may be able to get to them, uh, we'll show you some grinding grooves, which that's why I was saying earlier that this site in particular in the English's bridge site with Mount Camel, they are, to me they are all part of one, because of the greenstone, the grinding grooves which they would have used with the greenstone to sharpen their axes, and the axes once they were sharpened, as you've seen up there, they would have used to cut the scars out of the trees. Here we have a, a beautiful scar. Um, as you can see, it's very deep, so that indicates that um, it's very old. Um, and the particular scar itself is um, of a canoe. The reason why the tree has been scarred as canoe and heap of waterways, um, and they were used for, you know, coolamans, where they used to carry the water or carry a baby in it, or you know, berries or food or seed or whatever they needed at that time. mid-twenties I started uh, working in cultural heritage so I would talk to loads of different elders and youngers and in-betweeners I suppose um, and observed all sorts of things from rock art to different people telling me stories. Really I suppose the most special part of today for me is, is that to share with the kids, get an opportunity to share with the kids and um, to most importantly share the type of symbols that are unique to this part of Australia, to Victoria. The art of storytelling is not about giving someone just a history. It's about creating an interaction so they remember that history. I see nothing wrong with mixing the writing and the uh, modern methods, but there's still a room to keep some of it as an oral tradition, because with young kids, if they see you interacting with them, they remember better. I'm looking in their eyes and I'm seeing them, their imaginations going. So I then go, OK, I could see you're seeing the magic in the story and I feed off that too. Possum, <laughs> wallaby, kangaroo, do you not carry your baby in the pouch? Yes, so do I. What I got out of today um, was the opportunity as well to get out of the office um, and back onto country, um, you know, where, where it's at, you know, where in traditional sense, you know, the men would gather around, get together, you know, stand around a fire and communicate um, and yarn and talk about things. And I, think, and I think it's just important, you know, coming from a different um, area. Um, into Victoria and especially into you know Jar Jar Run country um, to, to meet the people, understand you know the land, the, um, the people, the culture, you know, and really try to um, you know uh, learn all that sort of knowledge and respect.
we can go out and hand it down now yeah, yeah. from from elders to to us and then us down to the youth and then yep. you know it's a it'd be a good cycle yeah it's just about um in a way sort of bringing together the, you know the two two cultures you know? My name is Bronwyn Razum. I'm a Gundij Mara uh, woman from uh, Warrnambool or Framingham. I find that um, now I'm working towards getting that um, actively um, known and make people aware of our cultural traditions. They said, often said that they just sat and they saw their grannies uh, uh, making the baskets but they didn't do anything themselves about learning. But um, I think it's, it's very important for this uh, traditional practice to survive in the future. My aunt is 85 for next birthday and my mother's 82. And we're not always gonna have them around. When those old people go, unless we learn it, and there's like lots of generations, there's five generations in my family, just my mother, me, my daughters, my grandchildren and my great-grandchildren. So it's important for, for me to learn in order to teach my children and then them to teach their children and their grandchildren. So all of those things just need to be preserved and taught to the young people so that it doesn't go away forever. Because too much has really been lost. I think the thing that, that's probably special about um, today is, is that um, you know, this is our culture, it's certainly our culture, but if we want um, non-Indigenous people to understand you know, who we are, it has to be your culture as well. And what I mean by your culture is I mean by us actually sharing what we know um, about our culture and what we can tell you um, so that you know. I think that's the real special thing for me, that we get an opportunity to, to share with uh, other people other than our own, our own mobs, so yeah.